Thank you for joining us in today's edition of Business Incorporated. Welcome to the program. I am Bolaji Akiwale. Coming up, a possible U.S. rate hike may happen soon as Fed Chair Janet Yellen drops hints. Egypt's central bank keeps interest rates unchanged. Plus, a look at the domestic fixed income market. And let's begin with the U.S. Federal Reserve interest rate, which the chair of the organization, Janet Yellen, has indicated that they could raise interest rates relatively soon. She said the job market had made further improvement this year and that inflation, whilst still below the Fed's 2% target, had started to pick up. Financial markets are expecting the Fed to take action at a meeting next month. She also defended the independence of central banks after criticism of the Fed by President-elect Donald Trump. Ms. Yellen's comments came in appearance before a congressional committee on Thursday. In December last year, the Fed raised its benchmark rates for the first time in seven years from, zero, from near zero to its current level of between 0.25% and 0.5%. Now let's take you to the market where U.S. stock index futures pointed to a lower open on Friday morning as traders eyed a host of Fed speakers on Thursday. Fed Chair Janet Yellen gave testimony before the Joint Economic Committee of Congress reaffirming that a rate hike is coming soon. Gio Malangino is VOA business correspondent joining us from New York. It's good to have you on the program, Jill. Now, while U.S. markets broke records this week, uncertainty reigns as the presidency transitions to Donald Trump. With more details on what traders are looking at, tell us about that. Good morning. So U.S. stock futures are pointing to a relatively flat open, but we came to trade on Friday with the S&P 500 close to its record high as bank stocks got a boost from the prospect of higher interest rates and consumer discretionary stocks were helped by economic data and earnings. Now, bonds are another asset class that is been in the spotlight this week. Is there any expectation that bond yields will recover? Well, after a painful week for bondholders with the U.S. 10-year bond down 20 percent and the 30-year bond down 14 percent, investors are wondering if yields will stabilize or continue higher, which is essentially the inverse of what we saw in the equity markets to a lesser degree. Now, LPL Financial explains that the consensus view says that increased policy uncertainty and expectations for higher deficit spending by the incoming administration will be inflationary and lead to higher rates. While we know this has played a major role in the yield run-up this week, it's also important to remember that lower global yields stemming from slower overseas growth coupled with the negative interest rate programs from central banks in Japan and Europe are likely to continue to put downward pressure on U.S. yields moving forward. Now, what other macro issues should investors be aware of? Well, of course, as you mentioned before, the interest rate hike. So outside of the Trump administration, traders are going to be looking at the December 14th FOMC meeting. We're pricing about a 90 percent chance of a hike uh, in December. Um, and we're also going to see how the dollar performs relative to global currencies. But more importantly, I'm also taking a look at China's stance on U.S. trade. That's something for President-elect Trump to weigh as he decides whether to honor his proposal for tariffs on the world's largest trading nation, which the U.S. had $627 billion in trade with in 2015. So sectors that I'm taking a look at that could be impacted range from aircraft, so stocks like Boeing, to technology in particular, so your Apple, Cisco, Intel. Another concern is with emerging markets, any overt or threatened protectionism would slow world trade growth and hurt regions counting on export-led growth. So are potential implications more clear now about the U.S.? Well, it's, right. So if you isolate the U.S., the Trump presidency will likely mean sizable tax cuts, rollbacks of regulations, and tougher stances on free trade and immigration. The U.S. economy, we're in a reasonably good shape right now. We're on track to grow about 2 to 2.5% 2 in 2017. Now, assuming President-elect Trump follows through with more fiscal stimulus, Near-term growth could be boosted, but we're looking more towards late 2017 or early 2018. Gio Malandrino, VOA business correspondent reporting from New York. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Still at the markets, this time in Europe, where stocks were higher in morning trade. On Friday, as rising U.S. bond yields pushed the dollar to a more than 
30 and a half year high as investors upped bets on the December rate hike. DWTV financial correspondent Conrad Buesen joins us from the Frankfurt Stock Exchange to give us more insight into how the markets are doing in Europe. Uh, Conrad, thank you so much for your time with us. Now, comments from Fed Chief Janet Yellen on the December rate hike is driving the numbers as European stocks opened higher. Rising U.S. bond yields also pushed the dollar to more than a 13 and a half year high, as I mentioned earlier on. Now, will this rise be sustained? Well, nobody on the market, uh, Bulaji, believes at the moment that uh, yields on uh, government bonds are going to uh, go down significantly, at least not for a while, and at least not as long as the current scenario remains intact. And the current scenario has to do with, you mentioned Janet Yellen, the perspective that soon interest rates in the United States uh, will be rising and will be increased. Janet Yellen's statements yesterday fueled this expectation and also many other Federal Reserve monetary policy makers this week uh, made statements that uh, underline that uh, the markets can really brace for an interest rate hike. The other part of this scenario, of course, has to do with Donald Trump. He wants to uh, spend a lot of money on infrastructure. He wants to give the U.S. economy another stimulus. And this is as most people on the markets believe, only going to be possible if he increases the U.S. budget deficit. And this is also, uh, of course, uh, going to be increasing um, uh, the, the amount of money that the U.S. will have to pay for his debt. Consequently, it will increase uh, government bond yields. Now, dollar-denominated commodities have become expensive for buyers. Uh, paying into uh, other currencies. The price of gold, which is typically seen as a safe haven asset, fell due to traders' increase, uh, increase in risk appetite. Now, do you think sentiment towards gold may continue in this regard as a Fed rate hike is seen as more likely? Yes, uh, sentiment against gold uh, is... Uh, uh, potentially and possibly and mo very possibly uh, to remain intact for a while as well uh, given that uh, uh, interest rate scenario. Gold is considered to be the first victim of rising government bond yields and also a uh, rising dollar um, and this despite the fact that also inflation is expected. You know this policy that Donald Trump has in mind is likely to fuel inflation and remember how Many uh, people on the financial markets in recent years uh, have demanded uh, gold because of fear of inflation. But this inflation at the time had to do with the monetary policies, um, the generous monetary policies worldwide for many years. Um, this inflation really hasn't shown up. Now the other inflation has to do with, you know, uh, Donald Trump with his uh, business activity. Uh, and, and this is what's likely to push the dollar. And, you know, these are times where investors simply don't want to have gold. At least uh, they get rid of large parts of their gold investments at the moment. Uh, just before I let you go, Conrad, let's talk about Volkswagen. Uh, the company says that it planned to cut 30,000 jobs by 2021 at its VW brand to help boost profitability and focus on new areas such as electric and driverless cars following the emission scandal. Now, is this a fallout of the billion dollars fine it paid to the U.S. government as a result of the scandal? Well, in parts, yes. Of course, the techn technological challenges that Volkswagen uh, faces are uh, challenges that all car makers are facing. We basically uh, still live in times where combust combustion engines are uh, used in cars, but everyone knows that this is about to change during the next years or decades. So, um, of course, Volkswagen, looking ahead, has to kind of make sure that it will also be uh, part of that trend that it will still be building and selling cars in 10 or 15 years time. Um, of course this, uh, annou these announced, announced job cuts now are uh, and also the other 
uh, measures that Volkswagen announced today in terms of uh, you know um, uh, cost cutting and trying to make the company more profitable again this is of course also influenced by the emissions cheating scandal Volkswagen had to set aside 18.2 billion euros for the potential cost of this scandal and this large amount of money uh, made the profit margin of Volkswagen sink even much more below the profit margins of its competitors. Volkswagen always used to have a bit of a lower or a much lower profit margin, but now uh, profit margins have sunk lower. And Volkswagen has to do something about it. Thank you so much, Conrad Biersen, the WTV financial correspondent, reporting from Frankfurt. And in Asia, the markets were mixed with the Japanese market climbing to an 11-month high on the back of an, a relatively weak yen. The benchmark Nikkei 225 ended up 0.59% at 17,967.41 at its highest close since January 6. After a meeting between Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and the U.S. President-elect Donald Trump in New York on Thursday, Abe said that he was confident of building trust with Trump when the later takes office next year. In South Korea, the Kospi closed down 0.3%. It's 1,974.58. Chinese mainland markets were lower in the late afternoon trade, with the Shanghai Composite down 0.47%. The Shenzhen Composite fell 0.18%. And in Hong Kong, the Hang Seng Index ended flat at the end of trading session. At the commodities market, gold dropped to 1% at a five and a half month low and was set for a second week of decline as the dollar soared after comments from the Fed chief bolstered expectations that U.S. interest rates would rise next month. Spot gold was down 0.84% at 1,205.75 an ounce. The metal hit $1,203 its lowest level since May 30, earlier in the session. U.S. gold futures fell 1% to 1,205 per ounce. Now, the dollar index rose to its highest since April 2003 and was set for its biggest weekly gain in a year after Fed Chief Janet Yellen provided a strong signal that U.S. interest rate would likely increase by the end of the year. At the crude oil markets, oil prices fell as a strengthening U.S. dollar beats back renewed hope that OPEC might finally agree production cuts. Brent crude oil futures fell 32 cents to $46.17 per barrel in early trade. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude oil futures was down 47 cents at $44.95 a barrel. A stronger U.S. dollar makes oil, which is priced in dollars, becomes more expensive to buyers using other currencies. The U.S. dollar index reached a 13-and-a-half-year high on comments by the Fed chief. She said that a rate increase could happen relatively soon, indicating higher chances of the rate hike in December. And Nigeria's government says it will return the export expansion grant in 2017. At a new conference in Abuja, the Minister of Trade, Industry and Investment, Mr. Okechuku Enelama, explained that the grant would be reviewed to encourage local production as well as small and medium-scale enterprises. Mr. Enelama admits that the country is seriously in need of investment and efforts are in place to create an investment-friendly environment for potential investors. This um, EEG program was stopped by the previous government because of abuses and because of the non-sustainability of the program. The program didn't look like it was sustainable. So they, they, they put a, a hold on it. They put a hold on it. They didn't stop it. They put a hold on it to just understand what were the sources of abuse and how to... The good news is that we met with the exporters two weeks ago and told them that we will restart the program with adjustments and, and improvements to make sure it's more sustainable. And I believe that the program will come back full stream in 2017. And we also said that like, even the amount that were being owed from the program will be paid 
but it's going to be paid under a so under a program that will be linked to tax credits and um, another benefit. And that was Nigeria's Minister of Industry, Trade and Investments, Mr. Okechuku Enelama. Business Incorporated returns after this break. Please stay with us. <laughs>